DJ Rock is here. It is time for another reaction from the YouTube People's Champ. The history of God of War. Yes. Kratos and the Titans scale yeah. Mount Olympus to take out the gods once and for all. Naturally, yeah. it doesn't all go to plan, and Kratos is the king. Highly, J Rock, J -Rock. Hands come back Hands come to back. you too. What is happening in 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 with the millions? <laughs> and millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world, baby. J-Rock is here, man. We're about to check out this history of God of War. All right? Ragnarok is upon us. It drops next week, as a matter of fact. And J-Rock will be picking it up day one. But until then, let's check out this history of God of War. Showtime. Hacking and slashing at Greek Ooh, and sometimes oh, yes, Norse gods sir. and monsters in God of War since 2005. To celebrate the launch of God of War Ragnarok, let's take a look at the history of the series. Ooh. God of War. God of War. Uh, in 2002, three? fresh off the release of their futuristic racing game Kinetica, Sony Santa Monica Studio began working on something new. Kinetica designer David Jaffe had an idea. What if there was a game that was like Onimusha but with Greek mythology instead of Japanese yeah, I love and had the, the game, frenetic Onimusha. action of Devil May Cry and the puzzle solving of Eco? And then it also had a bunch of adult themes like sex and violence sprinkled on top. Boom, God of War. An over-the-top hack and slash game with puzzles and platforming thrown in for good measure. God of War is our attempt to really elevate the action-adventure genre to the next level. But it wasn't always called God of War, and its lead character wasn't always called Kratos. Throughout development, the working title for the game was Dark Odyssey, and Kratos was Dominus. When the marketing team asked for a new name for the character, the team submitted some ideas, with the frontrunner actually being the name Stig, a name shared with the game's lead environment artist, Stig Asmussen. Eventually, the team landed on Kratos, a Spartan warrior who makes a bargain with Ares, the god of war, and is indentured into his service. The main character, main character Kratos, is, is a very uh, disturbed character. While waging war for Ares, Kratos is tricked into killing his wife and daughter, and their ashes are bound to his skin, giving him his ghostly white appearance. Kratos vows revenge against Ares and begins the search for Pandora's box to bring down a god. Every bit as weak as the day you begged me to save your life. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. As a part of his dodgy deal, Ares binds two blades to Kratos' forearms using chains, and these blades of chaos are what he uses to wage destruction against everyone and everything who gets in his way. From gods to harpies, sirens and gorgons, Kratos' blades swung around and shredded anything that stood in his path. <laughs> Later in the game, he gets magical abilities and even an additional sword, fleshing out the arsenal he uses on his angry man rampage. Chaining attacks would build an ability called Rage of the Gods, which would rip through enemies when unleashed. Lining up combos and smashing through quick time events to defeat foes was equal parts badass, brutal, and satisfying, and players loved it. If you have a dark sense of humor, if you love the action adventure games, if you don't mind a whole lot of blood and maybe a, a, a little bit of nudity here and there, this is the game for you. God of War launched for the PlayStation 2 to critical acclaim, earning a 94 Metacritic score, with the only real sticking point being the game's static camera. Movie rights were snapped up, but as of this video, no firm release is in sight. However, a new Amazon Prime streaming series has been announced. After killing Ares, Kratos becomes the god of war, but is still haunted by his past deeds and the loss of his family. After joining the Spartan army to attack the city of Rhodes, Zeus betrays him, strips him of his power, and he's taken to the underworld. 
Kratos hunts down the sisters of Fates, who have the ability to turn back time, a feat that he wants to use to help him get revenge, obviously. With new weapons, relics, and abilities, Kratos takes the fight to Zeus, battling any creature, god, and even Kraken, who once again is foolish enough to stand in his way. After directing the original God of War, David Jaffe became the creative director of its sequel, with lead animator Corey Barlog stepping in to direct. And this won't be the last you'll hear about one Mr. Barlog. We're here for the, the Sony PlayStation Store Metreon Midnight launch event. God, that's a mouthful. Uh, and mm. it is freaking awesome to be done with this thing. God of War 2 launched in early 2007 for the PlayStation 2, mere months after Sony's shiny and expensive new PlayStation 3 was set to launch. When asked why it didn't launch on PS3, Barlog referenced the 100 million PS2s that had already been sold that people could play the game on, while also saying that PS3 owners could play it via backwards compatibility. Remember when PS3 could actually play PS2 games? Backwards compatibility. What a concept. Mm. The game's launch was once again incredibly successful, both critically and commercially, with GameSpot's review from Alex Navarro saying that it's more brutal and more focused than its predecessor, and that it's hard to imagine a better swan song for the Great. PS2. It's frequently lauded as one of the best PS2 games of all time, and to Corey's point about the PS3, the game was eventually remastered and released for the console, some time after backwards compatibility was removed from the PlayStation 3. In 2007, Kratos made his mobile game debut in God of War Betrayal. Set between God of War and God of War 2, Kratos is, you guessed it, betrayed, and he has to hunt down the mysterious stranger who has it in for him in this 2D side-scroller hack and slash. Pain. The following year, another spin-off emerged on handheld platforms, this time the PSP. Chains of Olympus was developed by Sony Santa Monica and Ready at Dawn, who would eventually go on to make The Order 1886. That game Chains of Olympus is a prequel to God of War, War, where the dream lord Morpheus has put a number of the gods War. to sleep, and Kratos is tasked with putting a stop to his scheming. But when the promise of being yeah. reunited with his daughter is dangled in front of him, he has to decide where his loyalties lie. God of War's epic battles and gory combos translated exceptionally well to the handheld PSP console, and the game is still the highest rated PSP game of all time, according to Metacritic. No more PSP games coming out. Oh yes. This was my favorite one. Oh yes. Oh yes. I even got this on the PS5, man. In 2010, Kratos leapt onto the PlayStation 3 with God of War 3. In an epic opening sequence, yes. Kratos and the Titans scale yeah. Mount Olympus to take out the gods once and for all. Naturally, yeah. it doesn't all go to plan, and Kratos is betrayed, again, this time by the Titan Gaia, who sends Kratos back to the underworld. The original ending plan for the game was actually very, very different to what we ended up with. I'll let the series' original creator, David Jaffe, who had left Sony at this point, explain. You kill Zeus in the first couple of minutes of God of War 3. There's a vacuum on Earth because that the, the Greek mythology religion is in shambles. The other religions and gods rush in, Norse mythology, Egyptian mythology, to kind of take over that, that place now that Zeus is no longer a, a power. He ends up getting all the gods to fight amongst themselves, thus ignoring man on Earth. And the way Kratos realizes that you kill gods with finality is that you get people to stop believing in them so as the gods have ignored man man begins to turn away from the gods and that's how Kratos kills all of the gods the God of War 3 mm. ending we got was as I mentioned very different with Kratos yeah. utilizing the power of hope from Pandora's box to eventually overpower the gods of Olympus before giving the power to mankind Kratos impales himself on his own sword, hoping to die and reunite with his family once and for all. The reviews for God of War 3 were glowing, and upon yeah. release, it was selling more quickly than its predecessor. Yeah. Dear PlayStation, I know in God of War 3 you're this Kratos guy seeking vengeance against the gods, but since my boyfriend got it, he's been totally ignoring me. Its sales were driven by an intense marketing campaign that included a contest to find the ultimate God of War fan, and even a themed NASCAR vehicle. But that wouldn't be the last we'd see of Kratos or the Greek gods. By unlocking the Platinum Trophy in God of War 3, players would be given a link to a website called Spartans Stand Tall. When enough people had unlocked the trophy, a new game in the series was teased. Go. Mm. 
God of War Ghost of Sparta launched on the PSP in late 2010, with an important story set between God of War 1 and 2, where Kratos heads to Atlantis and is tasked by his dying mother to find his presumed dead brother Deimos. Man, Kratos cannot catch a break when it comes to family matters, huh? While the game didn't review quite as well as the others, with many critics lamenting that it was just more of the same and didn't push the boundaries of the franchise, it was praised for its visuals and just how well it handled on the PSP. Ascension. I like this one too. What not better than God of War 3? Sorry, God of War 3, that one. In 2013, we found out just how Kratos became so angry with the release of God of War Ascension, a prequel to the entire series that was set 10 years before the events of the original game. It follows Kratos after he breaks his oath to serve Ares and is hunted by the Furies. Although not technically another quest for revenge, it still involves Kratos trying to break the chains of servitude by killing a lot of things. The game's distinguishing feature was that it introduced multiplayer to the series for the first time, allowing up to eight players to battle it out online in a number of modes. Favor of the Gods has you reach a certain amount of favor points by killing others and controlling zones on the map, and Trial of the Gods is a co-op wave-based survival mode. The multiplayer didn't blow anyone away and was criticized for lacking depth. Ascension reviewed pretty well, but it was clear that the franchise needed a breath of fresh air. Olympus was old news, and fans were waiting for what was next for Kratos. After a few years working on various projects, including a stint with Mad Max director George Miller and working on 2013's Tomb Raider, Corey Barlog returned to Sony Santa Monica to helm the next installment of the God of War franchise. With Olympus seemingly played out, it was time for Kratos to find a new home away from the drama of the Greek gods. During development, Ancient Egypt was considered as a setting for the game, with the team even creating concept art. But the team at Sony Santa Monica eventually settled on Norse mythology, with the isolation and barren nature of the land being appealing. After the events of God of War 3, Kratos leaves Greece and ends up in Scandinavia, marries a woman named Faye, and has a son, Atreus. But Kratos isn't able to escape his bloody past quite so easily, and despite living a quiet life, he catches the attention of the Norse gods. After Faye's death, Kratos and Atreus journey to the highest peak in the realms to scatter her ashes while being pursued by Balder, the son of Odin. The game centers around Kratos' struggle to break the cycle of violence and his relationship with his son, who is unknowingly part god. I know you're a god. Not of this realm, but there's no mistaking it. He doesn't know, does he? Not only did the game take a more mature, emotional approach to storytelling, but its gameplay was markedly different to previous entries in a number of ways. The camera was no longer fixed, instead following Kratos in one continuous camera shot, with clever tricks used to hide loading screens. Gone were Kratos' iconic blades, at least at the beginning of the game, replaced by the Leviathan Axe, an ice-imbued weapon that you could throw and recall with the satisfying Ooh. press of a button, much like Thor's Mjolnir. The game was far triangle, from an escort mission, with Atreus triangle. proving useful not only when solving puzzles by helpfully offering suggestions, but he could hold his own in combat by filling enemy stun meters with his bow and arrow, even summoning spectral animals to help fight. God of War was a critical and commercial success, earning high review scores and winning multiple Game of the Year awards. All right, and the Game Award for Game of the Year goes Boy. to God of War. Read it. Cory Barlog released an emotional video of him seeing the 94 Metacritic score for the first time, which honestly is a really lovely watch. <laughs> but that wasn't the only God of War title to launch in 2018, because there was also Mimir's Vision, an AR experience for iOS and Android that would beam the game's map onto a flat surface and let you poke around in it and learn about the realm of Midgard if you're into that kind of stuff. There was also A Call from the Wilds, a text adventure game on Facebook Messenger where you play as Atreus on his first adventure. If you make it to the end, you'll unlock eight pieces of art from God of War. As of 2022, it sadly seems that Call from the Wilds isn't working anymore. This brings us to God of War Ragnarok. 
Ragnarok, aka the end of the world in Norse mythology, is coming and Kratos and Atreus are trying to stop it. A daunting task made even more difficult by the Aesir gods Odin, Freya and Thor, who are seeking revenge for the deaths of their kin. Ragnarok will be the end of the Norse saga for Kratos and Atreus, with the creative team at Sony Santa Monica revealing that due to the long development process, they didn't want to stretch the story out for years and felt that two games were enough to conclude it. For more on God of War Ragnarok, including our review, features, and guides, make sure to subscribe to GameSpot on YouTube and check out GameSpot.com. We'll also have more episodes of History Of coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Twitter at LucyJamesGames, and we'll see you next time. Oh, J Rock says it's Kratos, Kratos, I think y'all get the drift. God of War 3 was the best one. 1 and 2 were great. God of War 3. Oh. I still play that game. Even to this day. What, what, uh, uh, what, the, what, what boxer? What, what, uh, damn. De De Deontay. Deontay Wilder. What did he say? To this day. To this day. I still play that game. And now Ragnarok is upon us. I think there was, uh, it was released on Twitter. It says the God of War 2018 copy sold like 23 million copies worldwide. 23 million copies. That pales in comparison to the millions of J-Rock fans all over the world, but that's neither here nor there. 23 million copies. Oh, I can only imagine with this game. Ragnarok, I'm predicting right now, 30 million. You heard it here first from the great one himself. 30 million copies for God of War Ragnarok. Because so many more people have come in and played this game, especially those who got it on PC. They gonna want to play this one, all right? 30 million copies. You heard it here first, all right? But, man, this was a this was a damn good walk down memory lane for the great one. All right, now, what say you? Your turn. Post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the great one's reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Make sure you hit that bell so you'll be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Stay tuned for my next video. Mamba, Gigi, and Wakanda forever. If you smell la 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 what j-rock is cooking